Our first building project of the year is to build some shelves in our shipping container. So we started yesterday and we took some wood from our pile that's now wintered uh, two years. This is pine, two by fours. And then we planed them. We still need to cut some more pieces to the length. We cut the uh, OSB in half for shelves and then we'll have to assemble the shelves in place. But the problem is there's a lot of stuff in the back and we'll need to move it first before we can assemble the shelves. We've got the first shelf built here and it, it's pretty solid. Uh, as you can see, I'm sitting on it quite happily. It can't rack that way at all because it's up flush against the sides of the container. But in terms of racking forward and backwards, there is a little bit of movement. The longer term goal is to have more shelves going down the walls of the shipping container. And once they're in, that'll help prevent these from racking. But I think what we might end up doing is making a couple of triangles up the side uh, or maybe down below this shelf just to really help the, uh, the shelves stay strong and stop them moving around. Because we do want to be able to load these up. Uh, we are building them strong so they can be loaded up nice and, uh, nice and heavy. One shelf down, this was by far the hardest to get in. Uh, it was really kind of a bit of a, an effort to work in here because we wanted to build it in tight to the corners. And that meant that we couldn't build it outside and bring it in because we'd never be able to turn it diagonally to get it to this point. So we had to build it in situ and that is always difficult, that always makes things much harder. Nailing kind of in midair is, is never much fun. But we've got it in and it's nice and solid. So I've been working again this morning on the, the shelves here. So when we, we left before we had the bottom shelves in but we didn't have the top shelf. And what I found was it was racking quite a lot, which we kind of knew was going to happen. There's no diagonal bracing. So I played around for a while with some ideas to see if I could brace the legs and, and stop them racking and stop them tilting forward as well. The shipping container actually slopes slightly down that way. So there is a real risk of these uh, toppling over. In the end, what I decided to do was use some uh, metal hooks that are already in the shipping container. So in the corners at the top, about halfway down and at the bottom, there's some metal bars going across and I just needed a way to secure it onto there. So I used some steel cable. We already have this. It's actually from a little cable fence that we made, a little gate across the driveway. We took that down last week. So I was able to reuse this steel cable and a couple of wire clamps to basically come from the back there all the way to the front leg. I used a clamp to get it under tension and then clamped it off there. Same on the other side. And this thing now, I mean, that is really, really strong. That's going absolutely nowhere, which is exactly what you want when you're dealing with heavy things, potentially quite high up. I've now built, there's gonna be two more shelves in here, and I've built the next, I'm calling these like ladders, if you like, these, uh, these supports that go in. They're a really tight fit in here. So you can see just on friction alone, that will actually hold in there. I had to get these in together because I think once the first one is in, I don't think there'll be space to get the second one in diagonally. These are quite thick pieces of wood and the tolerances here are really tight. So I've got them both in. This one is going to come up to somewhere around my head height for a shelf. The, uh, the bottom one is going to come to actually about the same level as the steel cable here. So we'll still be able to access the cable if we need to but the shelf will come in just underneath. So my goal today is to get this finished off. If I can get this finished, well, if you could see the other side of the camera, it is a bomb site in here. There is stuff everywhere on the floor. We've just been moving stuff out the way to give us some space. So the goal now is get this complete so we can start using our new shelves. Well, that's me done with the shelves. I've got them in, as you can see behind me. I'm really happy with how these turned out. These look and feel really, really sturdy. I can hang my weight off any one of these shelves, that is not a problem. There is plenty of strength in there. And that bracing mechanism that I used uh, on the sides to anchor it to the, the shipping container itself, that's worked really well. Like, you can really kind of tug on these shelves and they are not moving at all, which gives me a lot of confidence for loading them up. A couple of little issues I have to deal with at the end there. Uh, to get the last two shelves in this one and this one, I actually had to cut the shelves in half down the middle 
Uh, the reason being that there was just not enough clearance to get the OSB in diagonally. Um, so I just cut them in half and I cut them along one of the, uh, the blocking pieces. And that way I'm just able to nail those down. The shelf spacing, we've sized all that very deliberately to fit a load of our storage containers. The plan is to build more of these. Uh, we're actually going to have it as kind of like a U shape. So this one on the back wall and then a couple down the side walls as well. My plan there is that as long as the top shelf and the bottom shelf are the same height, we're actually gonna anchor them all together. We'll put either some like nice big screws in or some bolts or something. So that basically all of the other shelves are then anchored to the back wall as well by virtue of those steel cables. We'll also probably anchor them to the walls themselves and maybe even put a cross brace between, uh, between the two and that way the uh, the shelves can't tip inwards. We used all of our own milled lumber for the, the two by fours, we milled those down. The OSB obviously we bought, but otherwise this project just cost us the OSB and some nails, which I think is pretty good going. In order to make our shipping container workshop even more useful, we want to move it closer to our build site. This is where the utility building is going to be. There is a driveway in the middle, and this is where the house is going to be. And the shipping container is all the way down in the middle of the driveway. Right over there. So it's a little bit annoying every time to get the tools, bring them here, you forget something, go again. It's just a lot of back and forth. So ideally we would move it up here. Now the question is where? One idea, our first idea was to put it right here. Nice flat area, long enough for a 40 foot shipping container, but there are two problems with it. One, the utility building wall is gonna be roughly around here. And if the shipping container is here, it doesn't leave much space to get with the tractor through to the other side of the site. The second problem is utilities are going to go from utility building right across to the house. So that means we'll need to dig up this area again. And in order to do that, we'll have to move the shipping container. So we need a different solution. So instead, our idea is to put shipping container where that log pile is. Actually, there's two. There is a softwood log pile and hardwood log pile behind there. We measured it. It's large enough area to get a shipping container in. It's fairly flat, but not completely flat. So we'll have to manage that. But the biggest problem is it has all these logs there. So today I'm going to start moving them to over here where this house is going to be. And we'll definitely have to mill those logs before the house foundation goes in. So I think they can sit there safely without being in the way. So let's do this.
Yao. We have cleared away the log piles and now we have a nice flat area where the shipping container should fit. We have measured the straight line here all the way back and it's 100 feet. So the truck dropping off shipping container should be able to get in there. We have marked our ideal location with these four flags. And initially the shipping container is going to be probably like this position. But hopefully either the truck or we can winch it until it sits here. And surprisingly this area is completely flat. So we should be able to level our shipping container to be flat. The truck is here. The truck is going to reverse up to, up to the shipping container, put it on, take it down, turn around, and then move forward to the top. Now he's going to try to move the shipping container that way.
take pretty easily. Yeah. The shipping container is in place exactly where we wanted it, so now it's time to unload. Our shipping container move was very successful and the delivery driver did a really good job of getting it where we wanted but couldn't quite get it the last few feet. So in order to do that we used this uh, shipping container lifter. This is something that we picked up online and it's basically just a big L bracket made of real thick steel and this fits into these holes like that and gives you an anchor point. We were then able to use the bottle jack and this is just the, the six ton bottle jack that we carry around in the truck anyway. That fits in under there. And using that, we were able to, to lift the, uh, the container. And that's how we got it level. So we used that in the back corner, uh, or both back corners, to lift the shipping container and uh, slide some blocks under. Because we'd got this whole area really quite level, but it was not perfect. And since the container is going to be here for a while, we wanted it absolutely perfectly flat, perfectly level inside, unlike how it was before. So we use that to, uh, to get it level. So why were we so keen to get the shipping container up here? Well, while we're living in the RV, this shipping container is a huge, huge resource for us. Not only is it storage, but it's also our workstation. We have a workbench in there. When it's uh, poor weather outside or in winter, I can come in here and I can work in here. It's kind of like a workshop or a garage. Where it was down at the, uh, the previous location, we didn't have power down there. It was on a slope. It was 500 feet downhill from the RV. So it was kind of a pain to get to, to go and grab tools or whatever. So having it here is really useful. Let me show you some of the things that we use this shipping container for. So here on the right, we have our lumber storage. This is just an area at the front where when we go and buy materials, we can just stack them here and, uh, and kind of keep them out of the way. It's a bit of a mess. Maybe at some point we'll do a rack, but for now, this is kind of working okay for us. As we move back through, you can see we've taken advantage of some of the hooks high up to hang things from. This is some of our used sawmill blades that we, uh, we keep up here, just uh, on a little carabiner up there. This is one of the first projects I actually built uh, in the shipping container uh, last year, I guess it was. And uh, it's just a, a little workbench made entirely out of completely free pallet wood. Right now it's just being used to, to store the, uh, the drill press and, uh, and a couple of other things on there. We have our trash can, which is not just our construction trash, but also everything from the RV. We get through so little waste here. I think we've only been to the transfer station once so far this year to empty that. We really try hard not to produce too much waste. So this is the first big thing that we've built in the shipping container. This is the workbench. It's really solid. It's built with all our own lumber for the framing. The shelves are obviously OSB and a melamine top. This top is two pieces of three quarter inch melamine sandwiched together. They're not glued in, they're just a real tight fit in there. And that way, if this gets damaged, we can lift this one out, swap it with the one underneath or turn it over. So we've kind of got like four good to go uh, work surfaces here. I like melamine because glue doesn't stick to it very easily and it's easy to wipe down. It's a nice flat surface. The framing under here is also super strong. You can see we've double laminated some two by fours uh, for the, the legs. So this whole thing is really, really sturdy. What I've also done is ratchet strapped it to the, uh, the, the shipping container itself. And uh, up top, there's also some ties holding it onto the, um, onto the shipping container up top so it can't tip forward. Also, the rear legs are screwed into the floor as well. So this thing, this thing isn't going anywhere. We put some pegboard on the back here, which we found to be really useful for storing tools. You can come in here very quickly, grab the tool you need and head back out. Or if you're working on here, you sort of got everything at your disposal. This tool rack is something that I built custom. Uh, we've got a lot of DeWalt cordless tools and I wanted a way to store these that was nice and easy. Um, this is set up to hang all our tools by the battery holder. It also is sized so that it'll fit a tool with a battery on, it'll still fit in there. So, uh, so that way if I'm just working on something, I can keep hanging up my tools and grabbing them back out without taking the battery off every time. It's kind of a, uh, a pretty useful setup with some shelves above then that we can use to store smaller items like tape measures, drill bits, screwdriver bits, spare blades. It's all there with the tools. Some of that stuff I also store on the pegboard as well. 
and obviously you can see things like our chainsaw chains there. Moving back then into the shipping container, we're at the, the very back here, and this is our shelving that we built. So again, all of the framing for this shelving is done using our own two by fours. We did buy the OSB to make the shelves. And once again, this thing is really sturdy. I did tie the bottoms of the legs into the ground, into the, uh, the floor of the shipping container with some screws and also some, some U-bolts, and then did the same in the top corners as well. So um, there's actually, I don't know how well you can see them, but there's some steel cable that is pulled through those hooks, anchoring that vertical two by four onto the wall to stop this thing tipping forward, which was my big concern. I didn't want things heavy on here making this tip forward. The shelves at the back, there's then some nice big bolts that go through from the side shelves into the back shelves as well. So this whole unit, top and bottom, is just locked together super tight. These shelves can take pretty much anything that we want to put on them, which is great because we've got then really heavy duty shelves. We didn't pay for these. We didn't have to go and buy some more metal shelves, which are really expensive. I was able to build these with our own materials. So what have we got on here? Well, we've tried to sort things out. We've tried to have a little bit of a scheme in here. We do have various sort of like electrical and corking and painting and all that sort of stuff. Lower down, we've got the tools that we use more regularly. The batteries, the hand tools, uh, some of our wrenches, um, tin snips, sanding stuff, all that kind of stuff is around here. The back tends to be stuff associated with the RV or the vehicles. So we've got some sort of some ratchet straps and hooks and things from the uh, from the, the truck. We've got a load of like canning supplies for use inside the RV. We've got our um, dehydrator and things like that stored here as well. So that tends to be more of the, the RV related stuff. Around on this side, it's more sort of outdoor stuff. So we've got some like landscaping fabric, some of the big supplies, pieces of conduit, sheathing, uh, cutoffs of, of pipe and things is all in there. Gardening stuff down here, and then onto the sort of the vertical tools here. We're using the real top shelves way at the top for uh, just bulky, but not too heavy things. We got a couple of tires from the sawmill up top there. Over on this side, we've got the leftover poly pipe from the well, got some piece of foam board, some old cardboard boxes that we can use when we're doing painting projects. It is amazing how much these shelves just swallowed stuff. They've, they've been so useful. They've allowed us to use the full height of the, the container and really helped us to, to organize things. To reach up top, obviously we can't quite reach up there. We're not tall enough to reach all the way up top. We do have a, a little step stool and a, a step ladder if we need to, to get up there. That just folds uh, folds down nice and compact and, uh, and we can grab it when we need it. Really, really happy with these shelves. One of the things you may have noticed in here though is how light it is. And that's a recent modification we've done. We've added these strip lights in on the ceiling. This is just a temporary setup right now. I think I paid 40 or $50 for this string of lights uh, from uh, just on Amazon. And they're just LED lights. They are powered by 120 volt because we can pull an extension cord over here now. And what I did is I just got some, uh, it comes with little clips that are designed to be screwed into a piece of wood or the ceiling or whatever. I just found some, some magnets online that had a, a hole in the middle, put in some real short screws, machine screws and a bolt or a a, a, um, a nut on the other side and clip those to the lights and just magnetically attach those to the shipping container ceiling. And I tell you, those things are strong. I don't know how much weight those magnets can support, but they snap on there real tight. You've got to be real careful putting those on. They'll, uh, they'll pinch your finger pretty hard. But that setup is working quite nicely for us. It gives us a ton of light in here. And as we were moving it and then sort of resorting things in here, that was, uh, that was much appreciated. The plan longer term is rather than having an extension cord that will reach over here, we're actually gonna put a 50 amp RV inlet on the side and then actually wire up the shipping container. So we'll hardwire in the lights, we'll run some receptacles to the workbench, probably a couple over on this side somewhere as well and some towards the front. And with 50 amps, 240 volts, that's plenty of power then that we can run the table saw, the planer, any of those things inside if we need to because of the weather, but also enough to have all of the lighting in here. So, uh, so yeah. Temporary install for now, but uh, long term, we're, uh, we're gonna enjoy that, I think. Continuing on with the storage, uh, we've got a couple of different options going on here. Um, we picked up these boxes from Ikea. They're just the, uh, the plastic flip top boxes. And we use these to sort all of our recycling. Uh, being really diligent with our recycling is one of the ways that we minimize how much trash we produce. So uh, yeah, been, been happy with those. They stack, they also fit in the truck bed under the tonneau cover, so that works quite nicely. These uh, these filing cabinets we picked up, one for free from a, a neighbor who was moving and was giving it away for free, and this other one for a princely sum of $15 from a, uh, a thrift store nearby. 
and we've just identified what's in each drawer with some tape and then inside we just saw all of our different things so that was the the tapes there this one is all of our screws so then we've got everything organized when we need to grab something quickly we can come in get some nails we've got all of our different spray cans, aerosols, paints, oils, lubricants, all that stuff is in there. And, uh, and we've just found these filing cabinets are a really solid, heavy duty way of organizing that stuff. Continuing to move down here, um, we've got some big power tools. So we tend to keep these big power tools at the front. This is a uh, bandsaw and a compressor. We actually picked up for free um, from a neighbor who was getting rid of them. They work fine. They just, uh, our neighbor didn't have space for them and we were happy to uh, to find a new home for them. We've then got the, the bigger sort of floor mount of things like the, the planer, the table saw, the miter saw. We keep all those at the front because we tend not to use those inside the shipping container as much. So we tend to take those out. So it makes sense to have those at the front where we can easily get them out. One of the things that we found was that when they were here, it left a load of dead space on the wall. And so we decided to use that to mount the bikes. So this is a, uh, a bike mounting system that hangs the bike by its pedal. You may be able to see the, the back pedal there. And then there's just a little bracket under each, under each wheel that just kind of, it doesn't take a lot of weight. It just stops the bike from, from tipping. This setup just needed some way to screw this into a wall. Well, we didn't have a good wall to do that on. It was the steel wall of the shipping container. So I built this big wooden cross shape just with a, a half lap joint in the middle, wedged it between the floor and the ceiling, and then used again the U-bolts to anchor it top and bottom to the, um, to the hooks in the, the shipping container. In fact, actually, I think it's just top. There's just one up there. So it's sort of hanging, if you like, by the, uh, the hook up there, resting on the floor, but the, the weight is then hanging there. This works great. It keeps the bikes really high up, out of the way, out of the dust and things uh, below but we can just reach them down fairly easily when we need to, uh, to, to go out for a bike ride. So as you can see, we have a lot of stuff packed in, into our shipping container here. It is such a versatile space. If we are doing projects that require more space, we can clear things out at the front. If we are just in a sort of acquiring materials mode and we just need to like store some stuff like we had with foam board before, we can make a little bit more space to, uh, to store the materials as well. But given that we're living in the RV, this just affords us a, a dry, secure, indoor storage space where we can also do some work as well. Now, speaking of security, how do we keep everything here secure? Well, for that, we use this lock. This is a pretty heavy duty uh, shipping container lock. And let me just show you quickly how that works. So when the doors come closed, and I tell you, these doors move so much more easily now the shipping container's level. So if you imagine that other door was closed as well, these two parts would clamp either side of these big bars and, uh, and then there's a lock underneath that uh, locks up into these holes in the bottom and secures that. Once that's in place and the doors are closed, uh, this thing is, is really secure. We, we have thrown a chain lock on it when we've gone away for a longer period, but um, but this thing is, is pretty beasty. So overall, we are really happy with the ship container. Having it up here has been an absolute game changer for us just in the last few weeks. It gives us the ability to, to come out here quickly if we need to bring recycling out from the RV, if we want to work on a project, we're not transporting tools in the truck anymore to bring them up from the shipping container to up here. This space is awesome. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.